Yeah, hello and welcome everyone to our first 2022 Pixel Studio Academy webinar where you can find information, skills and anything in between with regards to creative media arts uh, and uh, production. So over here, you know, we talk about uh, videography, photography, animation, designs, interesting digital media technology that you can use to make your work more efficient and fun to a certain extent, okay? Uh, my name is Indra from Pixel Studio TSG. Okay, the speaker for today is Mr. Patrick Cho, a project manager from TSG with the Digital Applications and Services team. He's one of the member of the Digital Services team who designs and builds digital services for our users. One of the products that you guys are very familiar with is our NLB Mobile app. So this is, he's from this team who manage our NLB Mobile. Uh, Pet used to manage services like OneSearch, where you can, where users can search across the GLAM industry, G L A M, which stands for like galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. So it's a federated search uh, function. He also worked on like the spatial discovery project for NAS, uh, the Google Chatbot, POC, and just to mention a few. Eh? With us today, also we have the Pixel Studio members who will help us run the session. Okay, so without further ado. Let's start the webinar session and I hand over to uh, the session to Patrick Cher. Thanks Indra, thanks Pixel Studio for having me. So today, I'll be sharing with you uh, one of the tools that I like a lot. And this has helped me to communicate my ideas to management as well as project team members and I hope it will benefit you. So by the end of this session, you will be able to explain what is Figma create and prototype your first designs and lastly share your prototypes with your project team members and gather feedbacks from them so before i dive into what figma is uh, i'd like to share with you this interesting illustration that i found online so i, I found this illustration very relevant to today's topic because it's very important to communicate your design ideas before committing resources to build them so in this illustration itself, you will notice on the left-hand side, you have a lovely couple who have just given birth to a, a kid recently. So they are trying to set up a rotating toy carousel for their kid so that they can entertain the kid while they go to sleep. So what they have done is they have implemented it and they love the idea. They love the implementation and they are admiring it. But they have not stopped and think from the baby's perspective. So what does the baby see and what does the baby hear? Is that suitable experience for the baby? So the image on the right is what the baby is going to experience. So for the baby's view, right, it is likely he is going to be looking at the bottom of these toys and the noise of these toys will probably also distract the baby. So this toy may even defeat the purpose of what the parents were trying to achieve. So therefore, it's very important for us to communicate and test our ideas very early, even before implementing it. All right, so today's session will be broken down into a few sections. So first, I will be talking about what Figma is. Then I will do a demo on how to create your first app and you can even prototype and share this app with your friends or even colleagues. And lastly, there is also bonus material that will help you elevate your designs to the next level. So what is Figma? So in a very short sentence, it is basically a prototyping tool that can help you turn ideas into products faster. All this can be done without the need to learn any coding and you do not have to be a designer in order to use this. So basically anyone with zero knowledge in design can use this tool. In this tool, it is able to help you design, prototype and gather feedback all in a single app itself. And to make things even more confident, this tool can be accessed online. So all you need is a browser. It can be a Chrome, it can be Safari, anything at all. As long as you have an internet connection, you will be able to use this app. And the beauty of it is you do not have to save your work. All your work is automatically uploaded to Figma. So there is no chances of you losing your work when you run out of battery on your laptop or there is a power stoppage. And in addition to being online, available online, you can also download the app on a Windows machine or a Mac or Linux for the more techie people. So who are the customers of Figma? So Figma can be used for 
a variety of industries so be it like for communications for developing apps so some of the familiar brands that we see on the screen is they are brands like twitter spotify if you are into cryptocurrency that's coinbase and if you are a developer you'll probably recognize the github icon so if you move closer to home in the government industry we have a few pioneers in using figma so we have GovTech, Ministry of Manpower, and CPF. So these are the front runners in the Singapore. Figma is also built around your team. So similar to Google Docu uh, Docs and Microsoft 365, this document can be accessed online anywhere by many project members at the same time. So similarly, that what this means is you, have, you can have a lot of project team members accessing the same document, making edits at the same time, and all these edits are automatically saved onto the cloud. So Figma works in the same way, be it you can have a team member that is accessing a piece of design from his browser or the Figma app from their own place. Every change is automatically captured and saved and uploaded to the cloud. So this makes the design process a lot easier and for the entire team itself. Not only Figma is suitable for designers or any product designer, you can also use this Figma document to communicate your requirements to a developer. So what it allows you to do is as you create your design, Figma automatically generates the CSS codes and you can actually export or share these codes with your developers. So using this CSS, they will be able to come up with a design system which can be used throughout the entire website. And not only that, you can also share your prototype with your developers so they are able to visually see what is required and develop the solution along the way. Another very powerful feature is Figma allows you to gather feedback early and very often from project stakeholders. So this allows you to work on the feedback and improve the product that you're trying to build. So this slide is uh, for the more technical people. So for designers who want to create their own illustrations, you can make use of the graphic design tools available in Figma. Some of the things that they have are pen tool. So you, basically you can create custom shapes using that tool and integrate it into your design. So you do not have to look for another software, for example, like Photoshop. You can do all your designs within Figma and integrate it with the screens that you're going to be building. And not only that, you can also use vector images in Figma. So in simple English, vector image is basically an image file that you can scale up, meaning you can enlarge it indefinitely without losing image quality. So this is very good feature that you can use in, within Figma itself. Figma also supports components. So when you have a lot of designs that you want to recycle, for example, buttons across different screens, right? You can actually create them as component and you can call these components within uh, your entire project. The beauty of it is when there is a change in the component, for example, your management may say, hey, I don't like red button. Can you change it to blue? So you don't have to go to every screen and change all the buttons to blue. What you can do is you just update that single component and all screens will reflect the same, the same changes without the need to go and eyeball and check through entire design. With all these features that I mentioned, Figma is actually free to use for design and prototyping. So Figma actually offers three different licenses from starter, professional and organization license. So in terms of design and prototyping, there is no difference uh, across the three tiers. But as you are trying to build, sorry, as you are trying to use more advanced feature, for example, if you are trying to collaborate uh, across a larger project team, then there is a slight difference. For example, uh, for starter license tier, you will not be able to set complex uh, sharing permissions. So for example, you have a project that you want to share with only a certain set of uh, project team members who are working on it. For if you are on the starter tier, you will not be able to do so. You will need a professional license or even an organization license. And there are also other features not available, for example, audio conversations. So this is actually a, a 
feature that can allow you to collect uh, comments. So instead of typing out your comments, you can actually have project team members record their comments in the in their using their voice. So this is also not available for starter uh, tier. And some of the things that are also not available are design systems and custom plugins. So these are only for uh, more advanced users, which you will probably uh, not use for the starting stage. All right, so uh, next I will share with you some of the resources that are useful for your design process. All right, so the first resource that I will share is called Figma Resource. So this is a website that you can uh, find resources, tools, and templates that you can use for Figma. So if you look through the site, right, there are a lot of things that are available for free to, that are free to use. So you have uh, UI kits, wireframes, mockups. So basically you do not have to start your design from scratch. So what you can do is you can come to the website look for available things that you can recycle or build your design on. So for example, the UI toolkit, you can already see uh, people have already built screens. So you can actually just download the uh, toolkit and make some changes and you can present an idea already. So you do not have to start from scratch. Okay, so moving to the next uh, example, it's UI icons. So this is a website that you can download free to use icons for your design. So you can you will notice that they have a lot of icons that are already available. And all you need to do is just uh, click on the download pack to, to grab the entire bunch. Third resource that, are, that is useful is called DrawKit. So this is a website that you can find free illustrations and they have frequent updates to the illustration library. So on a weekly basis, they will add on more illustrations that are available. So all you need to do is just scroll down. So you will see this illustration pack section. All right, so within here, you will notice some of these illustrations, they are paid. So if you are, you are just looking for free resources, you can just use the free filter to filter through and you will be able to see a lot of these illustrations that are available. So when you are trying to check out this resource, right? When you try to click free download, they may ask you to make a payment. So for in this step, right, you can actually put $0 and you will be able to still add to cart and check out. All right, so this is the last of the resource that I'll be sharing. So I will move on to the demo. For today's demo, I will be teaching you how to build your first app. So the first app will be called the Learning Pasar Malam. So like the name in first, uh, it's actually a learning superstore, a, a mini version of it. So what I'll be showing you is how to come out with the splash screen, a locking screen, and a class listing screen. You do not have to start from scratch. So basically what I have done is I have downloaded a file from uh, figmaresource.com. So I will use the file as a guide to show you how to build these screens yourself. So what I've done is I have imported it into Figma. Uh, this is a common issue that some of you may encounter. So when you download uh, files, right, there may, there may be fonts that are not available on your computer. So you can fix this easily by setting a font that you have. So once you have fixed the font, you will be able to see all the text in the mockups. So for today's demo, I'll be showing you how to build uh, the first two screens. So within the Figma tool itself, the uh, layout of this app is divided into three main sections. So the section on the left is where you will see uh, the layers and the assets that are available for use within your file. So layers basically means uh, the screens that you will be building. So if you expand out, uh, you will be able to see, okay, within the splash screen image, right? You will have a shape. So this is actually an icon. 
you have a group. So this is the next button. Then you have oval shapes. They are decor for only for a decorative purpose. So this is how Figma organizes your entire screen. So this is a similar concept to uh, Photoshop where you have layers. And in the middle section, this is where you can work on your design. And on your right section, this is where you customize your design. So for example, in your splash screen, you can set the size of the frame. You can set uh, other elements, for example, colors. So once you're happy with your design, you can use the prototype uh, button to set the animations. And just now I mentioned about uh, exporting your uh, designs to your developers. So what they can do is they can grab the CSS codes from here. All right, so without further ado, we will start recreating these screens. So in Figma, uh, the layers are actually called frames. So it allows you to create uh, based on a set of templates. So once you have selected uh, the frames setting, you will be able to make use of templates. For example, uh, if you are trying to build for a phone, you have available uh, models. So these frames are actually set to the size of the models. So if you intend to build for tablet, you also have a few models available. If you have a desktop, uh, likewise, you also have templates. So for today, we will set, be building for the iPhone 13 Pro Max model. All right, so once we have added a frame, we are going to be uh, recreating these circles. So you can resize the circle by uh, clicking and resizing that circle into something that is smaller. So once you have the three circles in place, what you will need to do is to change the color of it. So what you will need to do now will be select the three circles and go to your design tab in the field, change the color by clicking on the gray box and you can set a color that you like. So for today, I'll be using red to differentiate from what was downloaded and what you're creating. All right. So now you will notice in the center panel, the gray circles are now in red and you will be able to save this color for use later on. So you can click on the uh, this style button and click on the plus sign. So this allows you to save this color for use later. So I'm going to call this the NLB rate. This is a very useful feature because uh, by saving a color, right? And if there are future changes later on from, let's say uh, your management do not like this shade of red. So they ask you to, to use something darker. So what you need to do is go to this save color, click on the uh, red color square and reset it. So for example, like right now you want me to be black, you'll notice that everything that was set to the NLB red will reflect according to what you have uh, set now. All right, so next we are going to be adding uh, the name of the app. So we're going to call this Learning Pasam Malam. And we're going to center this. So in Figma itself, you do not have to figure out where is the center of the frame. So what you can do is you can make use of uh, the centering tool. So underneath design, you can use uh, this button align horizontal center and it will just align it automatically for you. So next we are going to add in an icon. So what you will need to do is uh, go to one of the websites that I showed earlier. So I'm going to grab a book icon now. Right. So from the icon pack, I have managed to find this book icon and I'm going to add it in. So to align with the color scheme, I'm going to set this to red. But I'm going to use a lighter shade. So there's a color contrast between the logo and the background. 
So for this, I'm going to save this color as well. I'm going to call this NLB Red Lighter. And lastly, I'm going to create this next button. So this is actually a composite of uh, two image. So one will be the circle and the other is an arrow. So what I did was to zoom in so I can align this nicely. So once that is done, you can drag it into your frame and you can add a background color so that you can differentiate that button from the white background. So this can be done by going to the effects section and you can, you'll be able to select a variety of uh, shadow uh, feature that you want to use. So for this, I'm going to use the drop shadow and you can, you can add in different settings. So for this, uh, I think the default looks fine but I will add in more blur so that it will blend well with the white background. Alright, so there you have it. You have your first uh, splash screen. So once you are done with this, right, you are probably going to need to rename this to something that is more appropriate. So as you work on different layers, the names will be uh, more intuitive for you. So you will need to double click on the name and you can rename it yourself. All right, so after renaming, I'm going to check that this screen is uh, able to render nicely onto a mobile device. So what I will do is I will go to the prototype setting and I will add a flow starting point. So I'm going to call this the learning pasar malam. Then I will click on the play button to check that setting, the, the screen that I have just built. All right, so this is the screen that I have just built. It looks all right, maybe except for this arrow. So I'm going to resize this. All right, so actually within the prototype, uh, you are also able to select device uh, that you want to show your prototype on. So because this, this, this design was built on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so I'm going to select this device and you are also able to select which color uh, you would like. So I'm going to use a gold for this. And if you go back to your prototype by clicking on the play, you will notice that now you will have the frame of your iPhone 13. So next, I'm going to be creating the locking screen. So this will be uh, based on the demo earlier. The screen is going to look like this. So it has basically the same elements except for the locking fuse. So what I'm going to do next is I will duplicate this. So you can just uh, copy and paste and rename this. All right, so the next step will be to shift up the icon and the name so that there is enough space for you to insert your uh, locking fuse. And the next step will be to add in the fuse. So you will need two of uh, two text box. So what I've just done is to add a outline for the text box. So you just need to click on the plus on the stroke and you can set a color. So I'm going to use a gray. If the outline is too faint, right, you can actually increase it by uh, setting a different stroke uh, number. So for this, I'm going to use four so that it's easier to, to find the text box. And uh, you can also add in rounded edges. So you all you need to do is go to the design under frame. At the bottom right corner, there is this setting called corner radius. So you can add in a number, for example, eight. You will notice that uh, the edges is no longer sharp and you have a rounded corner now. So I'm going to use a larger number so it's more obvious. So for example, 16. 
So you notice the edges are now even rounder. So next, I'm going to make this a bit shorter so that there is space for another few. Next step, I will rename this called username. Then I will duplicate this and call this the password view. Then I will drag it down. So you'll notice there is not enough space for the locking button. So you, all you need to do is just drag this button downwards to make space. And you can duplicate the password again and call it the lock-in button. And likewise, you can drag it down and to differentiate it from the text fields, right, you are going to use a different color so that people know that this is actually a button. So to do that differentiation, you can add in the colors by going to the field. And you can uh, actually make use of the colors that were previously saved. So to access it, go to view and click on this style button. And you can use the NLB rate that you saved earlier. And you can also remove the stroke by clicking on the minus sign. Okay, so next I will add in a text into the locking button so people know that this by clicking on it is actually to lock in. So I will use the text feature and mouse over to the red button and click on it and over type in lock in. Right, so now you have your second screen. So you can actually already start animating it. So you can go to the prototype uh, tab, click on my splash screen. Underneath the interactions, click on the plus sign. So, all right. So then go to your arrow button, click on interactions, click on tab change this to on tap, navigate to my login screen. All right, so we are going to test this animation now. So this is your splash screen. So you can click on the next button. It will show you your login screen. So Figma is actually quite powerful. It is able to do some uh, simple animation. So instead of uh, an instant uh, display of the next screen, you can actually do animation by using the animation feature. So they have a smart animate. So what this does is Figma will try to uh, find the difference between your first and second screen and they will animate it for you. So I'm going to select Smart Animate and I will give it a longer duration, for example, half a second. I'm going to test this now. So same thing, this is your first splash screen. Click on the next button. So you notice the icon and the button will move by itself. And next, I will finally teach you how to build your own uh, class uh, screen. So likewise, I will go to the frame, pick the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm going to rename this my classes. So if you look at the example screen, right, there are actually three sections also. So the first section is where uh, is the header. So it will be something like uh, welcome, so and so, then you, the user will be able to select the classes based on categories. And then the middle section is the listing of classes. And the last section is the tab 
for people to navigate across different features on the app. So we are going to replicate this. So likewise, go to the frame tool, create a frame. Then you're going to use a text tool to add in a, a welcome message. So I'm going to put in a sample username. So I'm going to call that user uh, Lauren Ipsum. Then I'm going to use a larger font so it's easier to read. Right, so we have already replicated the first section. The middle section, uh, likewise, we will always start with the frame again. Right, so once you have added the, the frame, you will proceed to build uh, each card that is showing a different class. So likewise, uh, you will have to start with a frame. Then you will change color so that you can differentiate it from the background. So for this, you can actually use the color picker. So if you really have a color that you see somewhere else that you like, you can use the color picker to take a snapshot of that color so you can reuse it for your design. Next, I will add a rounded edge. So likewise, go to frame, go to the corner radius, set 16 to it. So you will see it's no longer a square rectangle, it's no longer a sharp rectangle but a rounded one. And we will start populating the class name, the progress, and an image. All right, so for class name, use the text tool. So go over to the uh, rectangle and add in, say, English class. Then I will change the font size. And next, I will add in a, a class status. So use a frame tool again. And the fill, I will use, for example, uh, orange. So that people know that this is still in progress. And I will need a st status message for the status bar. So I'm going to call this in progress. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. So for the in progress, right, you'll notice that the alignment is a bit off. So what you can do is uh, you can make use of this feature in Figma called auto layout. So by clicking on it, what this does is uh, Figma will automatically change the formatting for the layout. So you can actually set, okay, if you have multiple uh, text elements within here, what is the spacing? And uh, you want padding around the text, right? You are also able to set it. So by using this alignment and padding tool, so you can actually set different numbers for this. So I'm going to put uh, 8 at the top and 16 on the sides. And you can also set this text to always center align, center and middle align. So this saves you trouble from uh, aligning this uh, in throughout your entire design. Right, so next I will add in the rounded corners. And I will find an image for to complete this card. So I'm grabbing it from the draw kit 
uh, illustration library that I showed earlier. Right, so you'll notice that I have just added this illustration onto Figma. So I'm going to resize this so that it will fit into the app. Right, so you'll notice that there is an issue trying to fit this image here. So what you will need to do is uh, look for that English class card. So I'm going to rename here so it's easier. And the image that I just added is called Draw Kit Vector Illustration. So I'm going to drag this into the English card class card. So you notice that automatically it will fit here and it will show up nicely. So I'm going to resize it even further so that it will fit even better. All right, so there you have it. You have your first class. And to replicate this, right, you will be, you, all you need to do is just to duplicate this and drag it down. So as you have multiple classes, right, it gets harder to uh, align it nicely into your frame. So you can make use of the uh, auto layout feature to do so. So we're going to add another frame. And I will drag these two into that frame. All right, so now I will add the auto layout. So for auto layout, because I want the, the cards to always have a consistent uh, gap in between the two. So I will make sure that I have the down arrow, the vertical direction selected. And next I will change the setting. So for the spacing, I'm going to put like 24. And the side padding, I'll leave it as the default. So you'll notice this blue line, it, it is slightly uh, smaller than the card. So you, you can fix this by dragging it on both sides. And you can add in more classes now. Right, so now with a few classes, uh, let's test the design again. So before we do so, we will need to do the animation. So uh, when the user click on the login button, you are assuming that the user has logged in successfully. So you can click on the tab, select navigate to, and point that to my classes. All right, so with that done, let's test the animation. So this is your starting page, your splash screen. Click on next. This is your login page. So after user has typed in their username password and click on login, you will see your classes. Right. So because of the time constraint, I'm not able to show you the, how to create the tabs, but it, it, it will be the similar step to what you have done for uh, the class uh, card creation. So you will just need to create a frame in an image. All right. So with that, I end my demo. Thank you, Pat. Uh, now we open up to the rest. Uh, if you have any questions, you can see uh, some of these functions, uh, some of you might be familiar with, uh, uh, similar to like Photoshop, Illustrator and stuff, right? May, uh, how do we create the gradient effect that was in the original green circle? So to do that, you will need to go to the view. So underneath, this solid, right? You can click and select a different option. So the gradient one will be called linear. For those who are familiar with Photoshop, uh, you will, this will be quite familiar for you. Lah. So basically to, to have a graduated color effect, right? You need to have two different shades. So you will need to set the two colors. So for example, you can pick one you want to start from black and gradually move to white. So you can uh, set one end of it to a different color and you will have the graduated effect. So this will be similar to what was shown on the demo, the green to white effect. Yep, I hope that answers the question. There's also a question in the chat. Uh, Shuyen asked the name of the template. Oh, the template that I used earlier was called Edu Life. So that is also available from figmaresource.com. We'll move on to the refresher. Uh, we have some uh, questions for you.
All right, so first question. Figma is a free to use prototyping tool. True or false? What about the rest? True. It's true, right? Yes, it's true. It's free to use. So question two. I must be a designer or a programmer in order to use Figma. True or false? Okay, that is correct. So for Figma 2, you do not have to be a designer. You do not be you do not need to be a programmer. So anyone can use the tool to come up with a design to communicate your idea. Question three. So Figma can be used to create prototypes for websites, mobile apps, social media posts, and even Apple Watch apps. True or false? Yep, that is correct. So Figma can also be used for creating slides uh, like I've shown earlier. All right, question four. So Figma can be used offline. True or false? Oh, oh 50, 50. Half, half. <laughs> All right, so Figma can be used online. It cannot be used offline because this is a collaboration tool. So uh, it requires an internet connection so that all your changes can be saved automatically on to Figma uh, server. Last all question. Right, last question. So I need to save my work and edits in order for my colleagues to see them. True or false? Okay, so most of you got it right. So you do not have to save because Figma will automatically, automatically grab your latest changes and put it onto the cloud for everyone to access. The winner is Wani. Congrats, Wani. So I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's session and thank you, Patrick, for running this session. It's been very enlightening to know that there are a lot of this software out there that we can use. Do subscribe uh, to get the latest training videos that we upload there. If you need uh, more information, just drop us an email or just let us know. Lah. So to end this session, stay safe, take care. Pixel signing out. Keep those COVID numbers low. So thanks and see you again, guys.